heal, kill, or move trigger. What's up everybody, this is Gunter Severlo. Today I'm going to show you three triggers that you could set up that will enable you to heal, kill, or move units. Let's go to the editor. We're going to go to Stratus. First thing we're going to do is we're going to create a trigger that is going to heal the player. So in order to do that we need a player, so we're going to pick a soldier from the right and we're just going to put him in the middle and then we're going to edit him and we're going to set his health and his armor real low and face him this direction that's all we need to do for him and next we're going to go to props and we're going to type in notice or we want a notice board so we're going to use a notice board as a backdrop it's kind of tells us where this trigger is at Next is we're going to choose a trigger, and we're going to choose a trigger without a size. I'm going to put it in front of the notice board, double click it, and we're going to adjust its size. So we're going to put 5, 2, and 2, make it rectangle. And under activation, we're going to set any player, and activation type is going to be present, and then you're going to want to set it to repeatable. So every time you enter that trigger, then you get the effect or the thing that happens that we're going to set this up for left squiggly bracket and then underscore x base and then set damage damage is going to have a, a capital d and you're going to press space zero right squiggly bracket and then space for each space this capital l list and then a semicolon and then space now what we're going to put after this is a hint and this hint will give us feedback that we've been healed even though we'll know that we're healed but we're, we're going to use this for heat feedback so we're going to put hint space and then quote you are healed and an exclamation point end it with a quote and then you're going to put a semicolon and that's it that's the code and then we're going to hit ok that sets up the code for the trigger and the trigger but we're going to just adjust the trigger size and direction and so forth. right so we're going to save that heal or trigger save that and let's test it out as you can see i have an icon on the screen if I scroll my action menu, it says treat yourself, and of course you can see the blood on my character's uniform. So let's walk into the trigger, stumble into the trigger. You are healed. So a hint will pop up, says you are healed, doesn't say treat me anymore, and the character is cleaned up. AI should be able to get healed too. That's if you adjust the trigger to anybody. If you adjust it to anybody, then anybody that enters the trigger will be healed but we set it to player so any player can enter the trigger and be healed the next trigger we're going to set up is a kill trigger and we're going to go back here by the entrance for that and we're going to put a trigger down with no size i'm going to put it in the center here with this particular trigger there's two variants of this trigger i'm going to show you the, the first variant to start with we're going to we're going to go to activation and we're going to set to anybody present and then we're going to set it to repeatable. And next we're going to go down to activation on activation, left squiggly bracket, and then type in if space not space left curve bracket is capital P player and then space underscore X right curvy bracket space then space left squiggly bracket underscore x space set capital d damage and then space one right squiggly bracket and then another right squiggly bracket a space or each space this capital l list semicolon all right, so basically what this code does is if it's not the player, then set damage for each of this list. So anybody that enters this trigger is basically gonna get killed, but not the player. So you just hit okay, and we just gotta 
basically set the size of this trigger. So we're going to set this to five. Uh, we'll set this to three, three, and a rectangle. And then we're just going to resize it. All right, so to test this out, what we're going to do is we're going to hide the player right over here. And we're going to fire team down. And... These guys are going to enter the trigger. We'll set it to 04. Try that. Alright, so that's something that you could do. It doesn't matter who enters the trigger, you could define who the enemy is if you want. Now, if I enter the trigger, we're going to set to anybody. And what we'll do is we'll give my guy a guy to command. So we'll save that. And if we tell our guy to go through that trigger, on the way. we set the trigger to blue four. Two, move up. Roger. Yeah. So the trigger won't kill me because. It's meant for anybody else. All right, so you guys get the idea. If you specify who's going to enter the trigger, then it works better. We're going to set up a variation of this trigger. If you remove all of this, and you take away this bracket, and you put underscore X set damage one for each of this list, this will basically kill anybody that enters the trigger so let's save that two move up on the way and this should kill me too yeah all right guys the next trigger that we're gonna set up is a move trigger and since we already have this trigger set up we're just gonna edit this one so we're gonna leave it as anybody present and repeatable and we're going to just basically clear the on activation box. And what we're going to do is we're going to type in a new code. So this one's going to start with left squiggly bracket. And if space not space left bracket is player space underscore X. And then right curvy bracket space then space left squiggly bracket underscore x space set and in capital p p o s space left curvy bracket get and in capital m marker and in capital p p o s space and then you're going to put a quote and then we're going to name this marker that we're going to place mark Marker name doesn't matter what you name it as long as it's defined in the code and the marker is the same name. So we're going to end it with a quote and then you're going to put a right curvy bracket. And then after that you're going to put a right squiggly bracket. After that you're going to put a semicolon. And then after that again you're going to put a right squiggly bracket. Hit space and then you're going to go for each space this and then capital L. L I S T this list and then at, after that you're gonna put a semicolon so we're gonna hit OK that's all set up next is we're gonna go to the map scroll in and we're gonna go to F6 for markers and we're gonna put a square edit it and we're just gonna make it say mark so right now it says mark that's all we have to do for that you can make the marker visible or not. It doesn't really matter as long as the marker is named accordingly to what you put into the trigger. Now let's go back to the code for the trigger. I just want to point something out that if the player enters the trigger, then nothing's going to happen. The, the player is not going to be moved because this code here 
checks to see if it's the, if it's not the player. We're gonna tell our second guy to go forward. Two, move up. We'll go. And he gets moved over there. Two, return to formation. Copy. And he's gonna keep doing that. So what is this trigger good for? It's good for, you could probably use it in a deathmatch mission or a team deathmatch. And you could probably set this trigger. You could probably put a couple of triggers here in the same spot with the same code and set each trigger to like uh, either 04 or independent, whoever the enemy is. So if this was like your base and you didn't want anybody entering your base and you let's say op4 was your enemy and they tried to sneak into your base and automatically instead of just killing them which eh, probably most people would want to kill them move them back to their base wherever their base is at i hope you guys enjoyed that i hope you guys find it as useful and want to thank you guys for watching catch you guys on the next video bye